Hello and welcome to today's video about measuring superharmonic voltages and currents in a secondary substation. This is Power Grid Expert, the YouTube channel about distribution grids. Today we will have a look at a practical measurement of superharmonic voltages and currents. And we did that measurement inside of a secondary substation. A few words about me, power grid expert. I offer consulting and services related to distribution grids and especially here to the digitalization process in those grids. So I'm offering installation, I'm offering trainings, consulting, um, protection relay testing and so on. Let's have a look at the motivation for this measurement, why we're doing it at all. First of all, if we have a look at the standards, um, this is um, here the number from the German standard, but internationally it's pretty much um, copy paste. Uh, 50160 specifies THD limits up to the 40th harmonics. Um, but nowadays we know that uh, the converters, uh, the inverters, the photovoltaic, the charging stations for the, for the electrical cars are operating at much higher frequencies. So there is a blind spot or not, let's say not a blind spot, it's a, it's a blind area we're having here. So we want to see um, and understand what's going on in these supraharmonic high frequency ranges for the voltages and currents. We want to measure these um, as an example and in the first step we measure up to 250 kilohertz with the device we are using we could have gone also up to 500 kilohertz in this case um, it would have been only a single phase measurement so how did it look like how did we install the measurement device as you can see we are using the low voltage compartment of the distribution um, of the secondary substation. Um, we are using four Rogowski coils to measure the currents and we are directly plugged in to measure the voltages as we are measuring in the low voltage side of the substation. As a measurement device we are using the PQA8000H which offers the measurement range we want to have in this case. The total duration of the measurement was around one day. Here a quick video about the whole setup. You see on the right the voltage um, plugged in, we see the Rogowski coils and uh, on the right side there he is, we have the measurement device that records all the measurements and also gives us the uh, possibility to have an evaluation of these measurement values. Which is of course the most interesting, it's the results. So let's have a look at them. We start with harmonic voltages up to the 50th uh, harmonic. Um, basically not so much interesting happened here. What we can see here at the 5th and 7th harmonic we have uh, reached limits that applies to all phases. What might be interesting is here the THDI uh, reaches well nearly nearly 60 percent which is um, pretty high um, at least for phase two. That might become interesting in future in the future video especially where I have a look at um, future regulations um, regarding THDI. In the frequency um, on the frequency axis up to 2.55 kilohertz um, pretty much of course the same so we can flip over. Here that's a very interesting way of showing the measurement data 3D so we have the time axis here, we have the harmonics here and we have of course the amplitude. What we can see also here, harmonic um, currents, currents 
not much going on in the high, higher frequency range. Um, but now let's have a look at the super harmonics. And as you can see, you see nothing. Um, why is that? Um, conclusion follows immediately. But what we can see here is uh, really like um, in the supra harmonic range, there is basically nothing going on, which is for the customer and for the grid operator. It's, a, it's of course, it's a great result and a good result for our measurement at this point. Um, uh, we wanted, of course, we wanted to see something. Let's have a look at the supra harmonic voltages also in the 3D um, graph. Uh, what you can see here, this um, this uh, wide band disturbances here have been switchings um, in the network. Um, so that is, of course, it's some kind of a disturbance, but it's not that the disturbance we were looking for. Um, here we have a small little peak around 40 kilohertz. That comes actually from an inverter. But as you can see, the amplitude is not um too high same happens in the currents we see the switchings we see there is no um special or um there is no high frequency peak uh in the super harmonics frequency range so as a result of that first measurement we can say um in the super harmonics nothing was going on it was pretty much silent why is that um, well, the conclusion and the most um, the most probable explanation is that uh, this substation is located downtown in a city. We do not have that much of photovoltaic. We do not have also in that area, especially not so many chargers, charging stations for electric cars. So um, those normally those elements who 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 add a lot of high frequency are not present in that area. So the measurement result is pretty much conventional. But let's have a look at another measuring point, another substation. And you who here you, we can see a lot is going on. What is happening here? We are again have a look at the 3D um, superharmonics um, voltages here. Um, as you can see, we have high peaks around 40 kilohertz. We have even higher peaks around um, 80, 90 kilohertz. And you can also see if you look over the time, this stops. And when does it stop? It stops at night. So this comes from photovoltaic. And you can see this is a very, these are very high peaks. This definitely creates disturbances in that network. Same if we have a look at the superharmonics measurement of the currents. Also here we have the peaks. We have the frequency range is 40 kilohertz and um, around 80, 90 kilohertz. Um, also strong peaks, measurable, easily spotable disturbances. So the outlook of those measurements, first of all, modern inverters, charging stations, and so on, create high frequency disturbances in the network. These are not limited by, uh, by the most used power quality standards. So we have to have a look at them because this is not regulated, not limited at the moment, but can create problems in the network. The harmonic, the high frequency highly depends on the loads and of course the, the, uh, the secondary generation in that grid. Uh, the more photovoltaic, the more inverters, um, the more um, charging station, the more is going on. As a future outlook, of course, this will not decrease, this will increase and this will create more problems. And in a future video, we will have a look at um future regulations because there is something under preparation of course and also what we can do because uh, one side is measuring and seeing okay i have a problem the other the other also very interesting part is to decide what can i do about it to 
solve the situation. If you like this video, I would like you to follow my YouTube channel. If you have any further questions to power quality, to measurement of superharmonics, um, to in general, to distribution grids, please just contact me. My contact data is down in the video description and of course in the channel descriptions. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.